Okay, what is important to know about why we're taking these notes after we've been working on this is that in Algebra 2, you will be coming back to some of these ideas, and although they make sense to you now, and I've really been pleased with how well you guys have made sense of these on your own at the boards with each other, I think it's very important for us to capture what you know now so that in a couple of years when you need to reference it, it will make sense to you again. So we are going to start off, like I said, with this purple one. And we're talking about factoring polynomials when there's three criteria that make this set of steps work. The first criteria is when we're dealing with a quadratic. So the degree is 2. And in our example, you can see that this is a quadratic because it has an x squared in that first term. The second thing that we need to make sure is true before we use this method is that this is a trinomial, which means we have three terms. We have this first term, the middle term, and the end term. And the final thing that's important in using this method is that we have an invisible one where the A would be. Right here, there's an invisible one. Next, we're going to talk about our X puzzle. It's important to remember when we're using our X puzzles that the B goes at the bottom. And the C goes on the top. When we're using these X puzzles, we have to remember that the C term is something that gets, it's the answer to multiplying. And the B term is when something is added. We have been calling this an X puzzle. I've also seen this referenced by other algebra teachers as a product sum puzzle. Why product sum? We get a product when we multiply. We get a sum when we add. So if you're all okay with that, we're going to go down to the steps to factoring success. There are five steps that we will be using to factor this way. We're going to do those five steps, steps on the bottom with our example. So I'd like you to write the example. We're going to factor x squared plus 4x plus 3.
our first step is to write the parentheses. and fill in the variable. So we're going to write our parentheses down there to get our answer space ready. And both of those parentheses are going to get an X in the first spot. Our step two, we're going to start our X puzzle. And to start it, we're going to place the B and the C. In this case, our C is 3 and our B is 4. As we've been working through these, you guys have been doing this third part as you've been solving the X puzzles, but we haven't really talked about it much. The third is a question. What will the signs be? Are we going to have a positive or a negative or one of each? We know things about when we multiply numbers and when we add them that make those, um, we need to know what the signs are going to be before we can put in the two numbers to fix it, finish our X puzzle. <clears throat> Step four, solve the X puzzle. And complete the parentheses. What numbers are going to complete our X puzzle? One and three. When I multiply one and three, I get three. When I add one and three, I get four. Does it matter which order? It doesn't. We know that they are both positive. So to complete our puzzle or our parentheses, we're going to do this. Anybody want to guess what the final step is? We're going to check our work using the box puzzle. Show your combined like terms to get that middle term. And that is the five steps that it takes for us to factor a polynomial when we have an invisible one as our first coefficient. <coughs>